Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. Before we get into anything, if we could get 400 likes on the video, that would be genuinely fantastic. Um, I'm a very happy man right now, and you'll sort of see why in a sec. But before I do that, um, have some highlights of the games we played this month. And today we're going to be doing the Tamworth game, just to shake things up a little bit. I'll see you guys in a sec. This ball in, burns across, burn with the goal, and it is 1-0 to Wimbledon. Wimbledon 1, Scunthorpe 0. What a perfect start to this game for us. Space puts it across the box, and it's put in the back of the net, and we just cannot stop conceding goals from that side of the pitch, no matter what I do so far. 1-1. Reeves with a free kick, ball across the back post. Ford is in there, and it is 2-1 to Wimbledon. Two goals from free kicks today, amazingly. We're making the most of these set pieces today. You can find it. Rick's through here. Rick can score, and Rig has done. That is a perfectly executed goal. Wimbledon 3, he's offside. No, he's not. Wimbledon 3, Scunthorpe 1. There we go, guys. Wimbledon 3, Scunthorpe United 1. The little tactical tweet really did work today. To the ball over the top to Lyle Taylor. He's got Loveridge in the middle. Can he find him? Let Taylor picks it up. Loveridge is in the back post and it's Preston nil. Wimbledon 1, James Loveridge. And amazingly, we are heading for yet another victory. This is incredible stuff. There we go, guys. Preston North End nil. Wimbledon 1. Little tiny tweet, which I'll explain in a minute, won us that game. Whoops, over the top. This is a bit of space here for Bradford. Seager's through and Seager scores. Wimbledon nil, Bradford City 1, Ryan Seager with the goal. We need to be careful here. And doesn't dispatch the penalty, but he does on the rebound. And it is Wimbledon 1, Bradford 1, James Loveridge with another goal. This is important for us right now. Whips it all the way and Loveridge at the back post. He scored. What an incredible goal and ball. Wimbledon 2, Bradford City 1. What a turnaround we've made. And it's all because of marking out Morris. Watch those runners. Mitchell's got away from his man, and Mitchell has scored. And that is Lewis Kinsella's fault. He left his man, and it is 1-0 to Gilliam. And, well, disappointing start. Early cross goes back for Reeves with a bit of space. Now, can he find a key pass again? Goes in for Shenton. That's nice football, actually. Shenton through for Loveridge. Loveridge is round the goalkeeper, and he scored. Wimbledon 1, Gilliam 1. James Loveridge has really stepped it up over the last few matches, and we are level again. Goes, whips it long. Loveridge is there. Not quite. Shenton. Reeves. Reeves with the strike. And it is 2-1 to Wimbledon. And yet again, we have turned the game around. Mainly thanks to Prozone. This is outrageous. Razak slips it through for Norris. Norris is in here. And he's equalised for Gillingham. What a lovely piece of play. Razak and Norris, ironically, the two players that we've actually targeted, just completely left their markers for dead there. Ford bombing forward now for Wimbledon. Is there one last chance in this game? No. Wimbledon 2. Gillingham 2. A a probably a fair result in the end. We really did do well but we let them we let our guard down at the wrong time right guys we're back so as you can see we've been on a crazy good run i, I really took stock after the port vale game and uh, we're gonna do a question of the day as well in fact we'll do that now the question of the day is this uh, would you ever leave wimbledon if a team like barcelona came calling no basically um the whole point of this save is to do wimbledon i don't i, I would find barcelona boring anyway um but that's actually a good question to throw out there like if you're managing a lower league team do you stick with them or if a big club comes calling do you then move to the big club because that's something i would never do just because I don't know. I just find that sort of defeats the point of the save I'm doing. Um, the only time I've done that is in Outcast of Icons, where that was the entire issue. But there you go. So let me know in the comments. And if you do have any ideas for a question of the day, do drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. And I'll be sure to get those on my list because we're getting a bit thin at the moment, which is surprising. Um, but anyway, yeah. So after the Port Vale game, I decided to take stock of what we had. Um, in terms of, we can see three goals, and the thing is, what I actually noticed wasn't anything to do with the three goals. What I did notice is that we were conceding a lot of crosses, obviously, but I noticed that they were mostly coming down our left flank, or our opponent's right wing, basically. Now, I've actually got our uh, players set to close down wing... Uh, right and left side of midfielders as well as attacking midfielders, wingers, basically, um, just immediately to sort of stem that. And it kind of helped a little bit in the last episode. However... The thing I noticed is that, in fact, I'll show you here in the tactics screen while we're here. Let me just do a quick pick to make sure this works. Right, so you notice that Ford is in. And the reason Ford is in is because uh, George Franklin broke his foot six months out. And that when that happened, I think that was in the first game as well, I was worried because I thought that he was the main source of a lot of our good play down that right. Thankfully, we've got the low knee of Anthony Ford to come in, and he's done a, a relatively decent job so far, as you can see from his 7.38. Now, the key thing is, I looked at how, obviously, if we were conceding goals down this wing here and less down this side here, I figured maybe it's because because Fuller is uh, a better defensive defender and Kinsella is more of an attack-minded one. But it turns out that over the last, over the 10 games or 10, 12 games they played, Fuller was averaging a 6.98 um, and Kinsella a 6.90. So not a huge amount of difference, but still not fantastic overall for both of them. However, what I did notice was that I looked at the wingers in front of them. So um, in this case, Frankham and Barcham. I compared the two and Barcham is so much worse as a defensive player. He has very little defensive. Uh, his tackling is three, which means that he's not getting back enough and helping. He doesn't have a lot of work rate to come back and help, which means that Kinsella was getting isolated at the back. So the way I've managed to deal with that or try to deal with that, and I think it's worked over the past few games, which you'll have just seen, is Barcham is now going to play as a defensive winger, which means that he's going to basically sit and not get forward as much. He'll close down if the ball is played out wide, but that means that he's got more support and more 
tougher in, for Kinsella. And you can see the sort of results of this as follows. So Kinsella, average rating overall was a 6.9. Last few games, 6.94. It was a little bit um, higher, but unfortunately it fell after the Gillingham game. Um, but it has improved. And key for this one is Barsham as well. Oh, I, hang on a minute. <laughs> it was the other way around. Um, but he's had a couple of poor games as well. So we may have to look into that again. But the point is we've actually, you know, gained 10 points this month from those matches. And that made a little difference. Now, it may not work for your tactic. It all depends on what players you've got and stuff like that. So that's how it looks at the moment. This is how the league is shaping up at the moment. We're currently in second place, which is just unbelievable. Um, nine points behind Barnsley, who are running away with it, as you would imagine. But I'm just in shock as to how we've got so far up the league so quickly, frankly. Staying up is going to be no problem. I don't know. I almost don't want to go up this year just because I don't think we'd have enough quality to survive in the championship and the money wouldn't be there yet because our players haven't had a chance to develop. So I'm a little bit worried about that, but we're going to do our best anyway. Now, there's a couple of things I want to talk about as well. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Tom Elliott also has an Achilles tendon problem, which means that he's out for five months as well, which is not good. Um, but yeah, so we've got some other games as well. Now, in the Preston game, we, who is it we shut down? There was one of their players that we completely shut out the game and then we won 1-0. Against Bradford City, again, the same thing. We came from behind because we shut down one of their players. And I think in the Bradford City game, it was, who was it? Let's find out actually while we're here. Let's have a little bit of story time. It was Josh Morris. I even mentioned it in the highlights, I think. Josh Morris, he had a great game, but once we shut him down, he could do nothing. And he provided the assist for Ryan Seager's goal. But after that, he just, and we also missed a penalty in this game too. So we, we could have actually had this game put to bed, but the, the missed penalty, oh no, sorry, we did. We scored the penalty, didn't we? You've just seen in the highlights. Um, so yeah, Gillingham was a bit disappointed to concede late on, but they played well and they, they really did stymie us for much of the game. A uh, quick look at the stats before we get moving on. Uh, goals, Loveridge, top scorer now with 11. Um, he's done well lately, though Taylor has missed a few and has only got has already got 10, so that's decent too. As for assists, Taylor doing well there. Man of the match, Franken was doing great, uh, unfortunately, but he's now had to go. Um, Barry Fuller's doing brilliantly in that sense. Average rating, of course, Jake Reeves, because of the amount of key passes he makes. Um, him and Loveridge are just monsters with that type of thing. Last five games, though, player of the month is Jake Reeves again with an eight over our last five matches. Right, let's get into the game. Right, so, I decided to skip that stuff because I was banging on a little bit too much. But since this is a bit more of a relaxed game, I decided to play a full-strength team just to sort of um, show you kind of the nths of what we're kind of doing at the moment. Um... Although I maybe should have put... In a, I might put Tony Harris on at half-time, give him a little run out of it, because I really do want to get him competent in that midfield role so we can play him there. The problem is, I still think we may have to let him go in January and put a huge uh, percentage of next, next sale uh, clause in him, basically, because teams like Southampton and Swansea are, are scouting him at the moment. Uh, Vyash Boas came to watch one of our games to go see him, so clearly this lad has got something about him, and I really don't want to lose him, but if we haven't got a choice, we may as well cash in in January just to make sure we get that. Taylor's gone through here, and it's a poor effort, but yeah. Uh, someone asked me in the comments a little while ago, or a couple of episodes ago by now, um, how we sort of develop these young players, because they were always sort of struggling to actually get the best out of them. I'm not particularly great at that, surprisingly. Um, not surprisingly, uh, pretty obviously. Uh, right, what are we doing so far? Reeves with the ball in, cleared away. Taylor brings it down. He's got a man in acres of space here. And that man is Barcham. Oh, he's at the bar. Reeves. Oh, okay. We're battering them so far in terms of um, shots, but we're not actually scoring a goal yet. And that's a bit of a worry. We can have a look at that in a sec. But yeah, so basically things I find important with that isn't just game time because game time, of course, is. So loan spells are important, but also things like having an experienced player, player? player. <laughs> in their position to tutor them, basically, and give them that little extra experience. Ford is in and Ford is probably offside. No, he's not. Okay, it's 1-0 to Wimbledon. And that's a good start for us, basically. It's taken us a little while. But again, Jake Reeves, three more key passes. He is just a machine. Him and Shenton really do hold that midfield perfectly for us. And I think without those two, we'd, if we didn't get Jake Reeves on a new contract last year, we'd be in all kinds of shit right now because he is so important for this team. He's probably our best player, frankly. And he and Shenton, who I would love to try and get on a permanent deal, frankly, because it just depends on how much he goes for. If he runs down his contract at Stoke, we might be able to get him on a free or something. Or if we notice that his contract's running down at Stoke, we could maybe get him for cheap in the last year because, you know, that's how it works. Um, I'm... Probably won't even take a look at the pros and stats for this one at half time anyway, because we're winning 1 0. They've offered nothing, but we do need to tell them to guard against complacency. I know they probably won't like it, but there you go. But yeah, so training. Obviously, make sure they're training in focuses that actually fit the tactical role, because sometimes if you let your assistants do it, they'll do all kinds of weird stuff that just doesn't apply. Um, not really doing anything in this game, frankly, Tamworth. They haven't made any key passes. Uh, three, interestingly. Uh, no one sort of standing out as being important, but look at that. We've had 14 already. Um, we could do with a bit more. But I'm going to rest a few players in this second half. So the first thing we're going to do is get off... Um, who is it? Yeah, we're going to get Jake Reeves off and we're going to get on Tony Harris. And I'm also going to get on potentially Michael Brown. Oh, actually, no, that's not such a wise idea, is it? Where else can he play? Uh, he can play here. Uh, he's not great there, but I'll tell you what. Um, 
We're going to get Michael Brown on as well for Shenton. Just try and freshen up the midfield and get something a little bit different. I know they can't both play there, but the point is they actually can. So there we go. Uh, ooh, wrong button. But yeah, so making sure they're actually trained in... Um, focuses that actually matter to the position that you want them to play you know regardless of what you think their best position is currently if you think that they could maybe excel in another area for, for example tony harris has all the perfect stats for a ball winning midfielder in that middle or for a, he's actually a decent playmaker in that middle area rather just because he's set as a defensive midfielder doesn't mean you can't retrain him yeah sometimes it could take a year but my god could it be worth it uh durell is actually doing all right here i don't know the question is what position does durell play he's probably fine there's their fullback or something okay no he's a, an attacking right-sided player so i might just we should be set to close him down anyway but we'll just make sure that we're extra closing him down so to speak we've only got one more sub left so even if we only win this game one nil uh, it's another way through to the cup i just thought i'd show you something a little bit different rather than just the league all the time and oh that's going straight in oh hoo -hoo! wow um tony harris has done well as well he's Decent for pass completion, but the thing I like about Tony Harris is that because he comes from that defensive midfield background, he's got a great strong tackle, and there's this ooh, header, which means that he's better, if anything, at winning the ball back than, say, either of the other two, frankly, Shenton or Reeves, frankly. Um, let's have a little look here. Lovridge could probably do with a little break as well. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, Tony Harris, I just don't see a way of us keeping him. Uh, the, the, at the moment I'll try him for another new contract up until the date that I have no choice, and then we'll have to offer him out, even if it's for like a £50,000 or something. Firstly, £50,000 would help this club at this point, but also, more important than that, um, we'd put in the huge 50% of next fee uh, sell-on clause, basically, because if he was to go to someone like Southampton and Swansea, that clearly means that they think he's Premier League quality, which means that he may even be higher than that. And potentially, all ball in, Taylor's header, and it's ricocheting off the goalkeeper. I think I think that's an own goal. It is from Belshaw, but there you go. So that's what I mean. So if, in theory... We should, if he was to move then to another club, get a massive chunk of that fee. And if you move for like two million, that's a million pounds in the in the Wimbledon kitty. And we need that money right now. That's the only way I can see of getting it, frankly. Um, because of our shitty financial situations, I may have to try something out that someone showed me in the uh, in a comment a little while ago. Apparently, like I always play uh, some friendlies against obviously shitty sides to get our morale up. And oh, Taylor's through again, and it's nearly gone in the back of the net again, but not quite. I always play some friendlies against crap sides to get our morale up but i also play some ones against big sides away from home generally to get big match fees now apparently if you set up friendly leagues in pre-season you can generally get them on tv if you get big uh teams to be involved in them so i'm thinking next summer due to our shitty financial situation we may have to try something out like that and see if we can rake in a bit of money um there we go wimbledon 2 tamworth nil it's nothing fantastic it's a silly, simple solid performance um no i'm still going to be passionate about them tell them that they did well and I'm pleased with the way they played because they did do well. Ford was superb. He's the only one that really stood out as a good player for us. Today. Let's just have a little look at him. Three key passes as well from the right-hand side. Very solid. Um, but yeah, one thing I did do as well against Gillingham was that I noticed that we were getting like 70, 73% of the ball at some point. So I actually put the tempo up. Now, I've seen people saying that that's gonna that our low tempo holds us back. I really don't think that's the case. The lower down English football, or the lower down the football ladder you are, the lower the tempo should be, really, in terms of your actual play. People seem to think that it's quicker at lower levels. It is not. Like, when you look at the Premier League and then compare that to the Conference, the Premier League is an insane amount quicker than the Conference, basically. It may look quicker, but it is definitely quicker. So I just feel that that's important that we don't get into this habit of thinking that when we get into the championship as the premier league maybe and start getting better players then we can start to look it up in the tempo a little bit and starting to maybe tear teams apart with the pace but for now we don't have the quality of players to do that basically so in the next episode i'm thinking oh well we've got two games against teams that were basically around us from before so that's what 10th of december that gives us plenty of time so i think dagenham and redbridge would be a fun one and uh, they're down at the bottom which means we'll probably win the game. But then again, we have actually we beat them home and away last year, I think. So there you go. If you guys have enjoyed this episode, please do drop a like on the video. That would be unbelievable. And uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. That would mean the world to me. And I'll join you guys in the next episode for a game against Dagenham and Redbridge. And hopefully we can continue this form. But part of me almost doesn't want to. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I would almost like us to just lose a couple of crappy games if FM could do that for us and just sort of keep us so that we can, I don't know. I mean, it would be nice to go up, of course, but back-to-back -back promotions is very much not in the uh, plan I have. In fact, at this point, we were supposed to be sort of challenging for promotion in the previous league. So uh, I don't want to overdo it too quickly because then we could end up in all kinds of trouble and I might get sacked if we've not got a big enough squad because of the money. So there you go, guys. I will join you in the next episode for a game against Dagenham and Redbridge. And uh, yeah, see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.